Hey, hey, people, and welcome back to yet another Intellectual Tuesday. The crowd goes wild. You close your book for like five minutes to listen to this, and then you're going to reopen it and keep reading. I know you are. It's, God, so great. Awesome. Uh, well, welcome. Um, today, I kind of want to give a peek behind the curtain and um, talk about what I'm, I'm doing. What's up, right? Um, in two particular regards. The first being the lore videos that I'm doing, and the second being the project that I'm doing about Belgium in August of 1914. So uh, let's talk about the lore videos first. Um, first off, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, my mom, uh, you know, she, she, she called me and wanted to make sure that I didn't have to go to like therapy or something. Uh, no, I'm fine. Uh, the lore videos, if it was not clear, are like it's fake. That's a story that I'm telling. Um, I have the story essentially all planned out. All I need to do now is tell the story. All I need to do is get out there, film, uh, get the people out there to film. Um, so that's what's going to happen here soonish. Um, hopefully, in the next couple months, that'll all be wrapped up. So that's been good fun. Uh, getting the story ready for that and going out and filming. Um, the 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 one episode I've been out to do so far uh, that, that was all good. I uh, I had a good time. So, uh, but yes, dog, fine. Mom, I'm doing okay. I'm fine. It's a story. I promise. <laughs> so, uh, that is all really with the lore. It's exciting. Um, uh, I've never done anything like it before, so I'm excited to try something new and I hope you enjoy the, uh, the break from the normal stuff. Okay. So now for the longer bit here, the Belgium stuff, and I'm going to preface this with there's, um, I, I generally think I'm a pretty laid back guy. I um I don't typically get super mad over things. I mean, obvi obviously like anyone in the world I get mad about things, but like generally I feel like I'm relatively level-headed. And recently um as of really like October of this past year, um uh, maybe late September to now, there's been a topic that has been driving me almost not not to insanity, but to like just the boiling point, just seeing red type of stuff. Um, and the broad category of that is during wartime. It's the treatment of civilians and the, I guess, specifically the mistreatment of civilians by occupying armies. Recently in Ukraine, in the city of Bucha, the Russian military has killed civilians. And I, I can't believe it. It's we're in, I, I know it's cliche to say it's 2022, right? We shouldn't be doing that. But seriously, like, I don't. How does that happen, right? Like, what? I, I. It's just one of those things that I just can't wrap my head around. I, I like. I know it's a thing, but it's like, how does it happen? And that that's a question that's been eating away at me since September, since October, right? And as a result, has changed in birth the project that I started working on at the same time. Um, the original project was the Belgian army in World War I and how they punched above their weight class and were able to stall the Germans for about like a week, which doesn't sound like much, but that week probably won the Allies World War I. It's insane. Obviously, there are other things down the road that helped the Allies win World War I, but World War One could have been an absolute just steamroll by the Germans had the Belgian army not courageously defended Belgium. Um, so that was going to be the topic um, of my podcast until the question, you know, it popped into my head of how do soldiers start killing civilians? So with this question, um, I, you know, I was reading stuff about the Belgian army and doing research about that. And I learned that Almost now under the radar, uh, but back in 1914, 1915, 1916, 1917, 1918, um, was an absolutely huge deal. Uh, about 6,000 Belgian civilians were killed by the Germans in the first nine days of the war. In, well, not necessarily the first nine days of the war, but nine days in August of 1914, once the Germans had rolled into some of these bigger Belgian civilian population centers. And... It's just one of those things that I knew, like, right then and there, I had to tell that story. That's a story that I had to work on because nobody else is. I've read 
a lot of books. I have uh, right now I have about 31 pages, no, 34 pages of notes in uh, Google Docs about what I'm going to talk about, about quotes from books, stuff like that. Um, and furthermore, I, I, you know, just to fuel the fire, I've got even more books. I just, and in fact, they're in here today. And they just got them. They're books about how to prevent genocide and how anthropology relates to genocide. Now, that being said, even right now, as I've been doing this since like September, October, I don't really know what to call what happened in Belgium. I don't know if genocide is the right word. I don't know if massacre is the right word. Um, but atrocity absolutely is. And for right now, that's what I'll refer to it as, the atrocity in Belgium in August of 1914. And it's it can be tough sometimes. It's not easy reading about all of the things that happened and realizing that these were people. You know, everyone in this story that I'm going to tell you here in the next couple of months, every single person is dead. Every soldier, every civilian, every German, every Belgian, every Dutch person, every reporter from other countries, they're all dead now. But given what has happened in Ukraine recently, and not even just in Ukraine, but also in countries like Iraq when ISIS was big, for example, given what has happened and how this keeps happening, I'd like to dive into the topic and see how this even happens in the first place. And if we're being idealistic, some steps that we can take to try and prevent atrocities like this in the future. So that is the story that I'm hoping to tell. And I thank everybody that I've been telling this project about uh, for their support and for their patience. Um, as I mentioned, it can be hard to read about this stuff, but at the same time, uh, I personally feel obligated to tell this story because nobody else is. You know, there's books that are, I'm like looking at my books right now. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine right now that I can see that talk about these atrocities. And while they're being told in the form of books, I don't think a lot of you are going into whatever your favorite bookstore is and saying like, ah, the uh, rehearsals, the German army in Belgium, August 1914 by Jeff Lipkes. That's the book I'm picking out today, <laughs> right? Um, no, they. I think obviously the academia is great. And I'm glad that people in academics are telling this story because in my opinion, it is a story that has to be told because we're seeing the same things that happened in Belgium in August of 1914 happen right now in 2022. And so I'm hoping to tell this story in a conventional way, in a way that speaks to you and hopefully brings you in to the shoes of somebody living in Belgium in August of 1914. One thing I also want to mention is I don't want to be a historical voyeur, so to speak. I'm not looking to tell the stories just to tell them, just to be like gratuitous, right? Because the stories that I'm going to tell you here, whenever this project is finished, and hopefully that is within the next couple of months, um, they're not fun stories. They're not clean. Uh, they're not nice. But they're life. They're what happened. And they're forgotten. And so I'd like to tell them to you in a way that engages you, in a way that makes you think about the problems that we see today, that we've seen in history, and hopefully how we can start to working to getting rid of problems like these. So with that, I hope that you have a amazing rest of your intellectual Tuesday. Whatever it is you're learning about today, uh, don't stop. Um, I think the world becomes a better place when we keep learning. So keep learning and keep being awesome. So until next time, I'm going to hit the old dusty trail. So I'll, uh, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.